Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we'll talk about compilers versus interpreters. As I mentioned, there are two ways to implement a language. One is a compiler, the other is an interpreter. Now, one thing I want to mention is that any language can have both implementations. It could have a compiler implementation. It could have an interpreter implementation. And uh, wherever you've seen things like uh, you type a command and you immediately see the output, that would be uh, an interpreter. So here is how a compiler works. So I have, let's say, a compiler. So this is my compiler. And what it does is it takes in the source program. And what it gives out is uh, the target program. So uh, that's what a compiler does. It converts a source program into a target program. and Next, what we do is uh, we take the target program here and we feed it some uh, input and the target program gives us some output. Now, the thing to note here is that the target program is um, machine understandable and it is often uh, specific to um, an architecture. So if I uh, use a compiler and uh, create a target program for for a computer, then that same thing isn't going to work on a mobile. Um, however, here is how an interpreter works. So I have an interpreter here. Now what an interpreter takes as input is two things. One is the source program. The second is the input. And what the interpreter does is it directly gives us the output here. So it takes both the source program and the input at the same time. So when we're discussing the advantages and disadvantages of a compiler and um, an interpreter, a compiler will usually run faster uh, because once we have the target program, we uh, don't need to do any of the compilation steps again and again. We can just take the input, run uh, the target program on the input and get the output. Whereas in case of an interpreter, um, it would usually be slower than a compiler because it needs to do the uh, all of the compilation steps uh, every time. But the primary advantage with an interpreter is its portability. So uh, because we are not creating any uh, architecture specific target program, uh, we could use the interpreter on, uh, we could use the same source program on different machines and uh, run an interpreter on that machine to get the output. So that's about uh, compilers and interpreters. And uh, since this video hasn't been very long, I wanted to talk about something else that I mentioned in the previous video. So I said that uh, a compiler need not convert from a human understandable language to a machine understandable language. Uh, so here's a very concrete example of what that means. So let's just say I uh, create a new language or uh, let's just say that after watching this series, you uh, design your own language and you want to make a compiler for it. So what you do is, uh, what you could do is, of course, uh, write a program that converts that language to uh, something that the machine understands. However, what you can also do is uh, just convert from the language that you designed to C code or C++ code or Java code or Python code and uh, then just use uh, the corresponding compiler to convert from that language to uh, a machine language. So there could be different, um, different compiler implementations. There could be compilers which convert from uh, one human understandable language to another human under understandable language. And these compilers also have a lot of use. So that was, uh, that was all I wanted to discuss for this video. In the next video, we'll start looking at what lexical analysis means. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and share the series with your friends. It's still not too late, just the second video. They can also join in right now. See you next time.